Hey guys, King of North here. Um, here to give you guys a tutorial on how to install uh, the 1.7 alpha. Um, so it's pretty exciting. It has all the patches, all the updates from this previous week. Um, and so hopefully you guys can hear me a lot better than the uh, previous uh, videos. My mic was a little low, so I got a new setup. But um, anyway, so what we're going to do is as soon as you open up the uh, TOTSK uh, 170 alpha uh, download you're going to take the bin the modules and the music folder um, and place them in your Bannerlord directory just drag and drop nice and easy nice and simple and um, you just hit replace when it prompts you and so for those who do not know where their directory is uh, it's pretty straightforward um, if you have steam it's under uh, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, Mapload, and Ord, right there. Um, and so once you do that, you can kind of pretty much close everything out, and you want to launch Bannerlord. And now your load order should look like this. You want to make sure you have Harmony installed because it does not come with uh, the install. Um, you want to make sure you have TOTSK images uh, right under Sandbox Core. Um, you want to make sure you have a TOTSK mode, TOTSK, GOT Armory 2, 3, and 4, GOT Throne Rooms, TOTSK Legacy, and oh yeah, that's another fun thing I'm working on. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, so once you have those, that's it. That's your load order. And so what should happen is that when you actually launch the game, it um, should look exactly like this And yes, it usually takes a little bit because uh, it's a big mod. Alright, there you go. You're going to have Trial of the Seven Kingdoms right there um, if you want to play Trial of the Seven Kingdoms. Now, if you want to play the regular, you know, native Bannerlord where you have Caladia and all the other uh, base game factions, you can hit Sandbox um, or New Campaign. But for, to play our mod, just hit Trial of Seven Kingdoms. Alright, perfect. And now we are at the um, culture selection screen. Um, and this is probably um, one of the biggest parts of the update that you can select certain houses uh, to start out as. Um, these are still, believe it or not, being worked on and updated, so um, yeah, so you'll see a lot more of these uh, in the future. Um, so we'll just select something random like, uh, we'll do Baratheon. And then you may notice some naked parents, which again, we're still working on. Oh, there we go. And we're gonna eventually edit these as well to where um, your character based off you know what you decide to do um, you're gonna have certain clothes armor all that fun stuff so again more fun stuff to look forward to and you decide to join the side of this is still a feature that's still being tweaked and worked on as well because um, there are going to be obviously faction wars um, so you're going to be able to decide right off the bat who you're going to join and fight with. Um, so we'll just click Baratheon for now. And again, still being worked on and updated, but it still works. But we're going to start out as normal. Alright, we've loaded into Westeros. And we actually are Baratheon. Okay, so this usually is where you can decide, you know, who you're married to, who your wife is, 
um, how many kids you have, the amount of troops that you start with, your culture, all that fun stuff. Again, it's in it's pretty unstable right now, and thanks to uh, Sue More Spouses who allowed us to actually use the code to be able to create this, but for more of a Westeros Game of Thrones version. Um, uh, he, I mean, she has not even updated it yet you know, for for one seven, so it's a little bit hard for us to kind of rebuild it in a sense in its entirety. But we were able to kind of uh, rebuild a few things and use them. But this um, the culture selection and building is a little a little funky right now. All right, so and that is it. We have loaded into Westeros. Um, and we are indeed Baratheon. Let's check our culture. There we are. We're Baratheon. All right, and so I'm going to go over some of the features for 1.7, as many as I can think of off the top of my head. So for one, a part of the um, uh, Sumer Spouses uh, implementation, uh, we can actually you know talk to our spouses if we had one. I think the button actually went away because we're not actually married right now. Um... But let's see if it will. There we go. It actually pops up. It's weird. Again, it's buggy. Um, this still works for the most part. You can apply these features. So, say if you do get married, you can change how fast your kids grow, which you can put that down to two days for each year, you know, what age they grow to, all that fun stuff. Um, you can also uh, marry anyone. So, you can walk into a village, say, hey, I have business for you, I want you to become my spouse, or I want you to uh, you know, join me as a companion, um, which then they can become vassals and all that fun stuff. Um, oh. Another feature that we have is that when you are actually um, just kind of walking around, you can actually serve a random uh, lord that you decide to serve, um, which, you know, it's part of a our version of the serve, almost like, serve as like a levy. Um, it's similar to the other mod that I'm not going to mention because God forbid I don't need any more flack from him. The guy's kind of a psycho. But anyway, um, yeah, you can pretty much serve in, in a lord's army for the most part and fight for whatever side you decide to. So say if you want to fight for the Tullys. Um, this, let's see, so discuss army. And there you have it, just like that. Okay, so this is completely our version um, with our um, background and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, so you guys can enjoy that. You can work your way up from a levy all the way up to a bannerman. Um, and you'll be summoned by uh, the king to uh, uh, pretty much become one of his bannermen, which is kind of cool. Um, another feature. Okay, so technically, if you have members in your clan, let's kind of walk through this. So you can um, actually get them to join you, but also when you create a party for them, um, you can actually have them follow you, follow you around, and, and kind of command um, command them around like an army, which is kind of cool if you have a big enough you know house, you can kind of do that fun thing there. All right, so let's see, got an error there, let's view, from a clan. All right, there we go. So he's now in our house. He's going to get a random set of armor. Um, I have not uh, narrowed down exactly how to assign uh, their armors, but it's just pulled from a... Um, it's called an array. That's what it's pulled from. Alright, so I'm going to talk to him. I believe I have to be actually in the party menu, so let's check that. Alright, I'm going to talk to him. Actually, no. Let's back up. In the clan menu, parties, new party, boom, boom. I don't really have any troops to give them, but here's the cool part. So here, I can actually say, you know, I have a new assignment for you. Um, let's see, what your let's see where is it at? When your party follow mine. You give them specific orders. Do not do this, do not do that. That's it. Boom. And you have it so they'll follow you follow you around like an army. And if that's not good enough, um you can actually um let's see. You can actually as assemble an army and you 
will not lose any cohesion, I believe it's pronounced. Um, up to, I guess, when you recruit like 13 lords, that's when it starts going down. So you can pretty much march around for months and months and months at a time, as long as you can support you know, feeding uh, the army and the troops. But um, off the top of my head, that for the most part, that is, I mean, some of the main features that we're bringing into uh, one seven. I know there's like troop overhauls and there's um, new troop trees and weapons and armor balancing and all that fun stuff that you guys can kind of enjoy. But that's about it um, when it comes to the Lord, Lord uh, load order and how it's actually done. Um, and again, if you are still having issues, the best thing that I recommend you guys do is if you have a or have had a older version of, of Bannerlord or previous version, not Bannerlord, of um, TOTSK. Um, is to delete those GOT files um, and then install the mod. So I would delete the files, verify your files via Steam, which you would go to um, go to Steam, actually walk you through it. Uh, not read Bannerlord, we'll go to library first. Um, let's see. Alright, there you go. Not read Bannerlord, hit properties, uh, local files. Verify integrity of game files, just like that. That's it. Um, and if you are still having like crazy crashes and you're in support, um, and the team or I ask for your uh, crash logs, uh, what I usually do is I have it locked here. But you can just search uh, the program data prompt, which um, they can kind of walk you through, and then just drop you know, either this file or this file. I'm pretty sure it's this one right here. Um, just sort by name and just grab the one of them with an R. But um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope this was extremely helpful. I know it can get confusing, but I promise you it's as simple as drag, drop, replace. That's it. You're done. Nice and simple. It's it's really not that difficult. Um, and a lot of people make it out to be extremely hard and how it's the most confusing mod they've ever been installed. But it's it's very very simple. All right. All right. Well. That is it, fellas and ladies. You guys have a good evening, night, good morning, and I will see you guys soon. King out.